uh, Romans 12, verse 1, 2, and I believe 3. I assume you brothers are all there. It says, um, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Um, I wanted to focus mostly on that first uh, verse, that to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is true and proper worship. It, it talks uh, in John chapter 4. Verse um, um, verse sixteen, I think, when he's talking to the to the woman with five husbands, that would that uh, that Jesus is seeking true worshipers, then that it's not going to be about, you know, it's not about worshiping on this mountain or on that mountain, but that a time is coming when has now come when true worshipers worshipers will fall will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and His worship, His worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. And when it comes to worshiping the Father, it's about being a living sacrifice. It's not just uh, restricted to one area, you know, on one mountain or this mountain at this church on Sunday at this restricted time or um, with this music, the way a lot of people think, while the rest of the week you're living life however you want. Yeah, it's not some, um, some uh, refuge that a lot of people use. There, there's um, many forms of unacceptable worship and we see the consequences of those uh, when it comes to certain people, you know, when they touch the ark or when the, but uh, the ark of the covenant or um, the two sons of uh, Aaron, they they worshipped incorrectly, and it's just yeah, and it's it's taken seriously. Worship is a much Worship is something we need to take a lot more seriously. Yeah, amen, Brother Brett. Um, you know, the question, what is true worship? Well, verse 1 tells us that true worship is offering your body a living sacrifice. And who was that perfect sacrifice? Jesus Christ, right? Um, how was sacrifice done in the Old Testament? You needed an animal that was uh, without blemish. You know, and here he tells you to present your body that way. Present your body as a living sacrifice. So you have to be holy and acceptable to his, towards God. And the only way we can be holy is by being redeemed by Jesus's blood. You see, and, and Jesus is what makes us holy and acceptable. Um, so ain't no point in me thinking I'm worshiping. You mentioned music and stuff like that. If my body is not holy. So if I'm, if, if I'm running around committing adultery or committing fornication or living with my girlfriend and not married and I'm going to church and it's Sunday and they're jamming the music and I think I'm worshiping, well, I think I'm going against this Bible verse here. I'm not really presenting my body a living sacrifice, so it really isn't true worship, is it? Are you, are you truly worshiping him throughout the week <laughs> is what we should be asking him right? Is this Sunday? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, one is uh, worship and blessing. We see in the scripture, we see in that chapter, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Number one is it talk about a give your body. They mean, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a, a living sacrifice. Yes, a living sacrifice. They mean, we have to present our body. First point we see in worship. And then next we see that uh, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 15 and 16. 
We see next is in worship, in worship, I see in 16. Let me read what was 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer sacrifice of praise to God. They will give your lead. There's praising to God also we see in the Hebrew chapter 13, verse 15. And that is, we see, the fruit of our lead. In that point, you will see again that in verse 16, but do not forget to do good and to share for with such sacrifice, God is well pleased. That means do not forget to do good and to share for with such sacrifice. In number nine, <clears throat> number 10 is to have to do good. And number 40, we see again, uh, number four is to, uh, to share with others, again in verse 17. And again, the true worship is see again in Romans chapter 15, verse 16. In Romans chapter 15, verse 16 that I might be minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentile, minister, uh, sorry, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering. We see that it is give and offering. Five kinds of worship is we see in the scripture. One is give our body. That's what Paul said in here, present your body. Second, give your lip. That means we have to pray to God, praising. Praising in uh, thirty, we see again that what to have to do good. That kinds of worshiping is we see in that in the scripture five kinds of worshiping. Look at verse eighteen. It reminds me of First uh, Corinthians um, chapter one, and in verse eighteen here of Romans fifteen. Um, he writes, for I will not presume to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed. And in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2, he wrote, for I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. A, it's a great parallel passage um, and in true and proper worship the believer is <clears throat> going to be consumed by the things of Christ um, by his word um, consumed with a love for people a love for the lost um, especially those in, in their family um, rather than being consumed by the, the things of the day the politics or um, sports, nothing wrong with sports. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything against it. Just it, it shouldn't be one of those things that rules our lives. You know, um, I know a lot of uh, Christian people um, who on Facebook would only post political stuff and get in fights and arguments with people about politics. And I kind of scratched my head at that because that's what I did when I was an unbeliever. I fought online with people about politics because I was right and they were wrong, of course, you know. Um, so it just, it made me, it kind of made me scratch my head to say, well, that's, if that's the only thing you're posting, you, you know, do you even know the Lord? Um, John chapter four, verse 23, you touched upon it, uh, brother Brett, you said, but an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Well, spirit, to worship in spirit means from, um, from your innermost being, right? From your heart, you worship God. Um, and truth means according to the pattern that he laid out for us. Not my way. You know, um, not, oh, well, it's Christian metal or it's Christian this or it's Christian that. 
the question is, does it does it conform to what the Bible standard says about proper worship? Right. There's nothing wrong with hymns, brothers. Hymns are beautiful for this for the singing portion of it. And I think what we're doing right now and what we do most Tuesdays and most Saturdays is most definitely worship. 